Hi, it's Jamie with UK Extension and this beautiful sumac, staghorn sumac that is growing wild behind our office became the inspiration for us to talk about fall color. Sumacs are one of the showiest plants around the state. Yes, they're kind of ditch line fence row weeds, but in a large space they can also be beautiful landscape plants. This is the staghorn sumac doing its regular red and purple thing. So what triggers all this fall color? How does it happen? Why is it better some years than other? The absolute best fall color occurs when we have warm sunny days, ample moisture prior to, like for the latter part of summer, that helps. Keeps those leaves healthy and keeps them from turning brown and dropping prematurely. If we've had adequate moisture through the summer and we get into the fall period, what happens is we start getting cooler nights. Warm days, produce more sugars in the leaves. With cooler nights, some of the processes are shutting down. That mean those sugars can't be moved out of the leaf as readily and you get a buildup of sugars. Those buildup sugars plus the shortening days are what bring on our fall color. The sumac is a brilliant example, but it's actually a progression. And I'm gonna show you how individual leaves go through this metamorphosis from green to these beautiful colors and talk a little bit more about the role the sugars and the light and stuff play in that process. Here are some of those same sumac leaves, but we've picked leaves at different stages of that transition to talk about how the process works. Fall color is impacted somewhat by weather, but primarily it's the shortening days that lead to this transformation. The green in the leaves, we all remember from sixth grade science class, is the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll actually, when the tree is, the leaves are actively functioning, the green color masks the yellows and things that are always present in the leaf. It's just, they're covered by the greens. So as the days start to shorten and this chlorophyll is not being used as well and not being moved out of the leaf as well, we start to have leaf color and leaf color changes happen. So naturally this would go from green, as the green dies off, we see more yellows. And then from the yellows, depending on the weather and how well the plant has done that season, stressed plants do different things than healthy plants. But later we can get the development of the reds and the brilliant purples that we think of. And those are actually attributable to anthocyanin, which is the pigment that produces those. They generally are manufactured from sugars that become trapped in that leaf. So that's how the progression works. We start out with yellows and things, and some things stop at the yellow. They don't have the anthocyanin potential, and that's why we have different colors on different trees. And some things like this sumac can show the whole range at one time. We have several things like sweet gum and others that display multiple colors. So it's a fairly simple process, but it is the short days that trigger it. And while weather plays a role, it's not the most pivotal role, although any kind of drought stress or really life-threatening occurrence during the summer that causes leaves to drop prematurely or start to brown around the edges can certainly have an impact on the fall color later. But um, the reds and purples actually look better when we have dry weather as those colors are developing. So we tend to think of some of the yellows and things being the earlier things, the purples later, but it just depends on the species of trees because as you know, all of this does not occur at once. And that is what typically gives us four to six weeks of beautiful, constantly changing color around the beautiful bluegrass state.